Look at my temple lying in ruins. So much um. for the constancy of mortals, their crafts and their hearts. Could you not shout? If they love me not, how can my love reach them? Right. Restore to me my beacon, that I might guide you toward your destiny. If you say so, lady. There you go. Whoa! Uh. It is time for my splendor to return to Skyrim. But the token of my truth lies buried in the ruins of my once great... The necromancer Malkarin defiles my shrine with vile corruptions. Trapping lost souls left in the wake of this war to do his bidding. Right. Worse still, he uses the power stored within my own token to fuel his foul deeds. Uh -huh. I have brought you here, mortal, to be my champion. You will enter my temple, retrieve my artifact, and destroy the defiler. Um, sure, I'll do it. Of course you will. I have commanded it. Yeah. Go now. The artifact must be reclaimed, and Malkarin destroyed. Okay. Guide my light through the temple to open the inner sanctum and destroy- Malkarin has forced the uh door shut. But this is my temple, and it responds to my decree. I will send down a ray of light. Guide this light through my temple, and its doors will open. Okay. Oh. Uh... Huh. What the? Go back to the nether realm, demon. Well, well. What do we have here? It's like a big uh, undead party. Oh! I guess it's time for me to join the party. It is done. The Defiler is defeated. Take Dawnbreaker from its pedestal. What? Am I supposed to know what that is? Oh. Malkarin is vanquished. Skyrim's dead shall remain at rest. This is as it should be. This is because of you. A right. new day is dawning, and you shall be its herald. Oh. Take the mighty Dawnbreaker, and with it purge corruption from the dark corners of the world. Wield it in my name. That my influence may grow. Okay. I'll, um. I mean, I'll take the sword, but I think you're gonna need to find someone else to spread your religion. It matters not. The plant cares nothing for the rays that bring it the warmth of the sun. As you carry Dawnbreaker. So will my light touch the world. 
Right. Oh. Oh, not again. Oh. God. Alright, well. That was educational. 27th of Sun's Dawn, 4th Era, 201. With the Brute and his companions in tow, I led our band across the marsh to Fol Gunther, Fol Gunther, where we made camp for the night. Little has changed since my first expedition ten years ago, but this time I have the claw, and I will have the amulet. I spent all night preparing a synopsis of my notes, in case some fragment of the tale or piece of ancient lore may be needed to bypass the wards within the tomb. Then I cast all my books and scrolls into the fire, and reduced my life's work to ashes. At long last, today is the day of reckoning. If I cannot have the amulet, no one will. Hmm. Must be a pretty special amulet. Well, well, well. What do we have here? <sighs> Four thousand years. Please go away. Four thousand years have passed. And the tombs remain sealed. The fragments of the Galdur amulet lie within. Since the day I first heard the rumor, I have, I have felt its power calling to me, pulling at me. I will be the one to reclaim it, restore it, bear it out into the world once more. I must have it. I must. <sighs> Alright, well. Let's see what we can find out here. Here, then, is the truth of the tale, as best as I have been able to piece it together. In the opening days of the First Era, the Archmage Galdor was revered throughout the North. Wisdom, wealth, honor, and power were his, and even Ysgrimor's heirs sought his counsel. Smothered by his shadow, Galdor's three sons grew cruel and resentful. They lusted after their father's power and prestige, and eventually, Yurik, Jerik, the eldest, discovered its source, a mysterious amulet from which he never parted. Together, they conspired to murder their father in his sleep and divide his amulet between them. And so it was done. Consumed by their newfound power, the brothers laid waste to the surrounding villages. So great was the carnage that the High King himself intervened sending a company of battle mages led by the Archmage Girmund to, sub su to subdue the brothers. And after a devastating battle, the three fled the field. Mikrul, the youngest, was run to ground in Fulgunthur, the ancient barrows at the foot of Solitude. And though he fought for three days and nights, he was at last overcome and entombed there, his crypt sealed by an ivory claw. Germund pursued Jerick to the shattered crypts of Sarthar. Half buried even then, ten veteran wizards fell before Jerick's elemental magic, but he could not overcome them all together. He too fell, and was sealed within the ruined city. And at last, Sigdis was cornered in the southernmost reaches of Skyrim. He challenged Lord Gelrmond to a duel knowing his foe was honor bound to accept, and they clashed in battle, matched strength for strength, and fell together on the field before Iverstead. The High King ordered a tomb built for Girmund on the lake which still bears his name, and had Sigidus sealed within, forever guarded by the one who slew him. Galdur himself was interred in a cave not far from where his tower once stood, in the place called Reachwater Rock. And when it was done, King Harald issued an edict.
The name and deeds of Galdor and his sons were to be expunged from every record, every chronicle, under pain of death. No word of them was to be spoken, lest any try to recover the amulet that had been sealed at so great a cost. And so it was done, but a little survived the ages. Enough. Well, there we are then. Fascinating tale. Um. Hello? Anyone else? All right then. <sighs> Fragment number one. Be bound here, Mikrul, murderer, betrayer, condemned by your crimes against realm and lord. May your name and your deeds be forgotten forever, and the charm which you bear be sealed by our ward. Well. Not anymore. If you are not here to grant me a good death, then you can leave. A good death? Yes. Were I to simply lay down and die, it would not please Malakath. But why do you wish to die? My time has come. I am old. Too old to become chief. It would be wrong for me to take wives at this age, so I will die. Malakath has given me a vision of a glorious death. I am to wait here until it finds me. As you can see, it has not yet arrived. Hmm. I mean, you don't look that old to me. Certainly you're still a strong, capable warrior. Indeed. One should find his death while he can still call himself a proper man. We orc men are not like these Nords and Imperials who carry on until they are gray and feeble and their hair falls out. To cling to something past its usefulness is unseemly. How much more so when that thing is you? Right, well... It seems there's no way... to talk you out of this. Perhaps I could give you the death you seek? Perhaps. Are you sure about this? As long as I, as long as you're sure about this, yeah, I will give you a good death. Mm, we shall see. Never should have come here. Ah! Well, hello there. What? Sis, what are you doing? Oh! What's this all about? Shadow clones? Come on, son of this. Oh! Stop it. <laughs> You've been very, very bad. This is for your... This is for your own good. 
Oh. You almost got me there. Come on now. Oh. Oh, not again. Come on now. What? Hello? Wait, what happened? Oh. I guess that's the end of that then. Be bound here, Sigdus, murderer, betrayer, condemned by your crimes against realm and lord. May your name and your deeds be forgotten forever, and the charm which you bear be sealed by our own ward. Well, there we go. If I were you, I'd keep away from the barrow on the east side of town. It's haunted. Really? Tell me more about this barrow. There ain't much more to tell. They're haunted, and you should stay away. Look, I've seen one of the spirits with my very own eyes. When it glared at me, I swear it burned right through my soul. Uh-huh. Do the spirits haunt your town as well? Fortunately, they seem to be sticking to the barrow. I think they're guarding it. Certainly isn't mm. helping my business any. Who'd want to rent a room anywhere near a haunted barrow? Right, right. Well, I could investigate this haunted barrow for you. If you think there's anything you can do, be my guest. Sure. Has anyone ever explored the barrow? About a year or two ago, some fella named Windelius came through. Said he was some kind of a treasure hunter. I warned mm. him not to go in there, just like I warned you. The very next night we heard screams from the barrow, and that was it. We never saw him again. What a shame. Anything you could tell me about High Hearthgar? The Greybeards are a solitary lot. I don't think they've ever ventured outside their monastery. We get the occasional pilgrim passing through here on their way to the summit, but almost all of them have returned disappointed. Hmm. You heard any rumors lately? People say there's someone in Riften that no. can change your face, make you look completely different. Do you believe that? I'll believe you when I see it. If you're headed up to the monastery, watch your step. It's a long way down. Okay. I can't see you, Raider. I can't find you. Why are you hiding? Hiding? Hide, hide, hide. Don't make me sad. Um... Are you okay, sir? Raider was here, then gone. Went to gather plants and never came home. Nope, nope. Everyone looked and no one could find her. Wilhelm said she'll be back. Told Narvi not to worry. Raider will come back. He said that, did he? Uh... So what's wrong with you? With father I said goodbye. With mother I said goodbye. Raider leaves and Narvi can't say goodbye. Makes Narvi very, very sad. Narvi needs Raider to say goodbye. I'll see what I can do about that. The mountain will eat you! Watch the mountain. Yep. On your way up the 7,000 steps again, Klimek? Not today. I'm just not ready to make the climb to High Hrothgar. The path isn't safe. Aren't the Greybeards expecting some supplies? Honestly, I'm not certain. I've yet to be allowed into the monastery. Perhaps one day. I wish I could make my deliveries more often, but the road's getting dangerous. Those Passing through on your way to High Hrothgar? About to make a delivery up there myself. 
Oh yeah? What types of deliveries do you make to High Hrothgar? Mostly food supplies like dried fish and salted meats. You know, things that keep fresh for a long time. The grey sure. tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. And in return? Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. Well, I'm going up there, so I could probably do that for you. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. Here, take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside, and you're done. Alright, that sounds easy enough. Be careful up there. Let me know if I can get you anything. So, uh, what's the story with Narfi? Ah, he's harmless. He's been in a state ever since his sister Raida disappeared over a year ago. He just uh -huh. keeps to himself in what's left of his folks farmhouse across the river. And you told him that she's coming back? I just said that to make the poor guy feel better. I'm pretty sure she's dead. Raida would gather ingredients from the small island in the river east of here. Then one day, she just vanished. I tried to look for her, but she never turned up. I see. If you're headed up to the monastery, watch your step. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, that looks like uh, radar, all right? <laughs> well, time to uh, break the bad news. I miss Rada. She was so nice to Narfi. Narfi said he can't be with Rada. I'm sorry, Narfi, but your sister is dead. Oh no! No no no! Narfi never got to say goodbye. Now Narfi's all alone. At least Narfi has Raida's necklace. Reminds Narfi of his sister. Thank you for giving this to Narfi. That's all right, friend. See you, see you around. I'm the Jarl's personal blacksmith, but that doesn't mean I can't sell you a few pieces for a fair price. Hello, Jarl's personal blacksmith. I have your dangerous heart. Good. I'd prefer using water to cool my metal, but it's what the Jarl wants. Here. Well? Some of my best armor. Wear it well. Thank you very much. Oh, gl glass armor. Well. Thank you for the glass armor, um... That I'm already wearing, but... I'm Gorz's assistant. I mean... And we're finally here. Seven thousand steps later. High Hrothgar. Alright, let me just, uh, uh... There we go. Alright then. So, a dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. Um... Yes, uh, I, th I think I'm here to answer your summons. We will see if you truly have the gift. Show us, Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. Uh, are, are you sure? Okay. Do not be afraid. Your shout will not harm us. All right, let me just do it over here, just to be sure, okay? <clears throat> Fus! How's that? Uh, you want me to strike you? I don't want to... Uh, okay. Shout at us, and let us taste of your voice. Hold on, hold on, it takes a while, okay? You ready? Just be careful, all right? I don't want to kill you. Do not be afraid. Your shout will not harm us. Yeah, you keep saying that, but... Alright, here we go. Fus! Dragon... You alright? It is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. 
Oh, hi. I am Master Angia. I speak for the Greybeards. Now uh -huh. tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? Well, I guess you're the only ones who know about this Dragonborn thing, and I want to find out what it means. Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit, just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the dragon blood that came before you. You mean I'm not the only dragonborn? You are not the first. There have been many of the dragon blood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you All are right. the only dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. So, what is this place exactly? We are the Greybeards, followers of the Way of the Voice. Uh -huh. We stand in High Hrothgar, on the slopes of Kinarith's sacred mountain. Here right. we commune with the voice of the sky and strive to achieve balance between our inner and outer selves. Well, uh, I'm ready to run. You have shown that you are dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But mm -hmm. do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? That remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into you a doing? doom, a shout. Now let right. us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All oh. shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Ro, the second word in unrelenting force. Ro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine ah. it with fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Ro. I see. You learn a new word like a monster. You truly do have the gift. But learning a word of power is only the first step. You must unlock its meaning through constant practice in order to use it in a shout. Well, that right. is how the rest of us learn shouts. As dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. As part of oh. your initiation, Master Einarth will allow you to tap into his understanding of Ro. Alright, go on then. Now, ah. how quickly you can master your new thumb. Right. Use your unrelenting force shout to strike the uh. targets as they appear. Oh, targets. There's gonna be targets, okay. <coughs> Fus How's that? Shit. Well done. Again. Oh, again? Okay. Fus Yeah, that that one was a little bit better, I think. Right, fellas. Learn quickly. Once more. O okay, I can do once more. Okay. Fus row. Yeah, that's that's good. Impressive. Your thumb is precise. <sighs> you show great promise, Dragonborn. Thank you. We will perform your next trial in the courtyard. 
follow Master Bori. Who's that? Is that you? Lead the way, old timer. We will now see how you learn a completely new shout. Master Bori will oh, yeah? teach you Wold, which means whirlwind. Wold. Oh. Oh. You must hear the word within yourself before you can project it into a thumb. Mm. Approach Master Body and he will gift you his hand of wood. Go on then, Master. Give me a little bit of that knowledge. Now we will see how quickly you can master. You shout. Okay, okay, sure. Master Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind sprint. Then it will be your turn. Master Bori. Rex. Wolf. Atlas. Now it's oh. your turn. Stand next to me. <coughs> Master Bori will open the gate. Yep. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Wolt. <sighs> your quick mastery of a new thumb is uh, astonishing. I'd heard yeah. the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself? I thought it was easy. I thought it was this easy for everyone. No, indeed not. But beware that your skill does not outstrip your wisdom. You are mm. now ready for your last trial. Retrieve oh. the horn of Jurgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ostengrav. Remain true to the way of the voice, and you will return. Um, so who is this Jorgen Wildcaller? He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, a master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the uh -huh. first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Wincoller's right. mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. And what is the way of the voice? The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this I gift see. has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery right. of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation sure. of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. Well, I will try to follow the way of the voice. That is commendable. But remember, the dragon blood is itself a gift of Akatosh. Do not try to deny that gift. Your destiny I will not. you to use your voice. Why else would Akatosh have bestowed this power upon you? If you remember right. to use your voice in service to the purpose of Akatosh, you will remain true to the way. All right, sounds simple enough. So what can you tell me about the Greybeards? We study the way of the voice according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Windkoller. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hrothgar. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege 
to guide you towards mastery of your voice. And there are only four of you. Five. Our leader, Parthenax, lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. Well, when do you think I can meet your leader, this Parthenax? As I said, you will know you are ready when your voice can open the path to him. Oh yeah, you did say that. <sighs> do you know why the dragons are returning? Does it have something to do with me? No doubt. The appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. You should focus on honing your voice, and soon your path will be made clear. Surely there's more you can tell me. There is indeed much that we know that you do not. That does not mean that you are ready to understand it. Do not let your mm. easy mastery of the voice tempt you into the arrogance of power. That has been the downfall of many dragonborn before you. Sure. Sure. All right. All right, master. I will I will return with the horn soon enough. Wind guide you. 